Shalom, y'all. Welcome back to our channel. So today I'm going to show y'all how I make my bomb ass chili. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm really not. But this will be the best chili that you ever tasted in your life. So first, um, I just cut up some onions. I'm not the best at cutting up vegetables, but I get the job done. So I kind of put them in little small pieces because I don't like big chunks of onions. And I'm only making a small pot, so I only use half of like a small onion. If you're making a big pot, obviously you can adjust this recipe to your liking next I get a pepper and I'm only going to use about half of this pepper as well I never use green peppers I always use either orange pepper or red pepper or yellow pepper the orange ones are my favorite I don't know I just like the taste of the orange peppers a little bit better but you can use whatever peppers that you like but to get this taste to get this flavor to get this bombness you're going to need a colored pepper I highly recommend orange or the yellow ones work as well All right, so after I have my onion and my pepper cut up, I go ahead and season my meat. I'm going to be using a little bit of onion powder, some garlic powder, just a tad bit of ground cumin, and I will be using some chili powder. So I don't over season my meat because I put a lot of seasoning into my sauce, but I do want my meat to have a good flavor. So I just, you know, season that just a little bit. And I also don't put any salt on my meat whatsoever. Now it's time to cook our onions and our peppers just a bit. I add some oil to a skillet and I'm not browning these at all. I'm just kind of sweating them out so they'll be a little bit tender. It helps um, in the chili when you do it like this because you're not waiting so long for your onions and your bell peppers to get soft. So I like to just do it and it brings out a good flavor when I add my meat. All right, this is something that I just recently started doing. Shout out to Abaddon. I'm adding this um, turkey sausage in it. You could use any brand. I use this Butterball um, brand. And I never used to do this, but Abaddon actually put me on. Shout out to my brother. Um, he gave me some of this and told me to try it in my chili. And it was so good. So now I must put this in my chili all the time. So then after I um, kind of cook my meat or well, my turkey sausage just a little bit, I go ahead and I add my ground beef and I just break that up so I don't have super super big chunks and then I just let that cook and do its thing So while your meat is cooking, it's a good time to go ahead and get all of your beans rinsed off. I don't leave it in the like gooey sauce that it comes in. So I use three different types of beans. I use the dark red kidney beans, I use chili beans, and I also use black beans. I really, really love beans in my chili, and this combination of these three different beans is so good. It really sets this chili off. I've sometimes had to make it without one of the beans, and it's really, really not the same. So please do not skip on the beans. And I also add corn. You can use sweet corn or regular corn. It really doesn't matter. I just don't recommend, like, cream corn. <laughs> Now it's time to really get your chili assembled. I have my beans and my corn and I'm going to add some chicken broth. I do not use water in my chili. I think the chicken broth gives it a beautiful, beautiful flavor. And this is so pretty with all these different colors. Um, next, I'm going to add some Rotel tomatoes with the um, green chilies in it. These are diced tomatoes. I don't know why I call it Rotel, but um, that's just the brand. And I use it with the green chilies to add a little bit of spice. I never really use this chili powder thing, but I had one, so I just decided to use it i normally just um kind of season it to my liking but this time i use the mccormick chili um package and i just use it in the original i didn't use like mild or spicy because i do have children and they be complaining So once your chili starts to boil and you can see those little bubbles coming through, this is when I like to go ahead and add however much meat. Um, my husband loves, loves a lot of meat, so I kind of go overboard with the meat. So once it does start to bubble and boil, go ahead and add your meat to your chili.
So after my meat is in, this is when I taste my broth and then I begin to season however I feel. So I'll add chili powder, I'll add some garlic powder, I'll add some garlic salt if I need to. I normally add paprika to my chili, but I didn't have any, so I didn't add any. But it was just as good without the paprika as well. Um, so yeah, you just kind of play with your seasonings. I don't use too many different um, seasonings. I kind of stick to the garlic sauce, the garlic powder, the chili powder, the onion powder, and I just build up on those flavors. When I tasted it, I realized I was missing the goat. This is the canora. I hope I'm saying it right, but this is just like a tomato chicken bouillon. This stuff, y'all, I'm telling you, this is a must in my chili. And I was tasting my chili and I'm like, yo, something is missing and this is what it was. So this really, really started to elevate my chili. So I just add tomato paste as well, just to kind of help. I think, I don't know what it does, but it gives me like that tomato-y flavor. And I feel like it also helps thicken up my um, chili. And as as you see my chili is starting to get thick and I just let it simmer I keep stirring it periodically so it doesn't get stuck to the bottom but I just let it do its thing until it is as thick as I want it and that's really all I do so that's really it I let my chili get thick and then I serve it I either eat it with crackers or cornbread or just by itself but I hope y'all enjoyed this video this is a bomb chili for the tabernacles for winter for whatever if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see y'all in my next one shalom